In a life of palaces and stately houses, there was one place the Duke of Edinburgh felt more at home than any other. The Royal Yacht Britannia was a floating refuge from the demands of service and duty. A ship that served as a mobile residence for the Duke and the Queen around the world, sailing more than a million nautical miles. Right from its conception, the Duke took a keen interest, adding his ideas for the interior after the ship's architect, Sir Hugh Casson, had penned the elegant lines. It was a private environment for them, which they never had anywhere else. They were always on show with footmen and prime ministers coming and going and receptions. And, and although they did a bit of that when she went abroad, she was a floating palace, but she was also a home, which was something they made for themselves. It was, it was their design, their environment, their wish. Accompanied by the Duke, the Queen came to perform the launching of the vessel, whose name until that hour had been kept a close secret. The Duke had only just left the Royal Navy at the rank of commander when the new Royal Yacht was launched in 1953. I name the ship Britannia. I wish success to her and to all who sail in her. He was immediately at home among the crew of Royal Yachtsmen they'd been drawn from the very best the Royal Navy had to offer. Three, two, one. Yay! Affectionately known as Yachties, they continue to gather on Britannia once a year after she was decommissioned. <laughs> All Royal Yachtsmen, past and present, and the Queen, God bless her. God bless her. Their last gathering in 2019 offered a chance to reminisce while helping to maintain this grand old ship, which is now a floating tourist attraction in Leith. His humour, his wit, it was just wonderful to be around. You know, he was just told so many funny, funny stories for you. And I'll always remember that, something special. The Duke himself, a former naval officer, was not a distant figure to the crew. He took pleasure in getting to know them and the ship from the bridge to the engine room. Quite often uh, the Duke would pop into the chief's mess for a chat and enjoy a pint of beer because we had the luxury they didn't have. Even as a monarch they didn't have draft beer and yet we did. And so if he wanted a pint of beer, he'd come in the chief's mess and he would entertain us, of course, with his... Uh, with his stories and his uh, experiences. Standing proudly by Britannia is a statue made from bronze recovered from one of the ship's propellers of Ellis Norrell, known by everyone as Norrie. He was the longest serving Royal Yachtsman, notching up 34 years aboard with his fellow yachty, Albert Dixie Dean. They got to know the Duke during countless foreign trips. I'd been to get two cups of coffee and I was to going back into the wireless office and the door was closed. And I got pumped and I was like kicking the door to get someone to open the door. And the Duke came out of here and I'm standing there with these two cups kicking this door. And he said to me, oh, just a moment. And he came across and opened the door for me so I could go in. <laughs> How did you feel? I was, I was terrified. And, but not as terrified as the time Norrie was asked to cut the Duke's hair after testing out some clippers on the crew. One evening I got sent for to cut the Duke of Edinburgh's hair. It frightened me to death. <laughs> but um, it must have been all right because he sent for me a second time on another particular tour, a long tour of the uh, Pacific. The Royal Yacht Britannia took the Duke way down south into Antarctica during his round-the-world cruise. In 1956, the Duke embarked on a world tour alone on the yacht, going as far as Antarctica, enjoying time with the crew, which included a beard-growing competition and a special ceremony to mark crossing the equator. Crossing the line once, he um, got pulled up before the Nelson's, uh, Neptune's court to um, be awarded a beetle wig and a guitar. He'd not heard of the Beatles in the early 60s and everyone thought this was quite hilarious that the Duke didn't know anything about the Beatles. The yacht also served as a family home where the Duke could enjoy time with his children, often cruising the Western Isles of Scotland. I, 
The ship's penultimate captain, Rear Admiral Sir Robert Woodard, remembers how the ship offered complete privacy for the Queen and Duke. It was home. You need to picture Britannia really as very much their private domain and that it was looked after by 260 people who dedicated their lives to making sure they were safe and comfortable and not worried by anything. And he would always cook. He'd cook anything. I was most amazed at some of the things. I mean, octopus is fine, but I mean, if you found a shark, he'd put it on. The Duke and Queen conducted hundreds of official engagements aboard Britannia, some solemn, many convivial. The Duke alone travelled more than 70,000 miles on the ship, twice circumnavigating the globe, those happy times making her decommissioning in 1997 all the more emotional. The faces of the Queen and Duke told the nation how dear the ship was to them. This was the end of an era for the royal couple, and it was keenly felt. I think this was so devastating when she had to be withdrawn from service, because they didn't have an alternative. They had nowhere. They still said, OK, we retreat to Windsor, or we go to Balmoral, or whatever it is. But we don't have that very special place we could go and be ourselves and not on show. The Royal Yacht was the only place where they could get proper privacy. And once you're on board a ship and it's at sea, you, you're just somebody else. And, and that's a, a rare thing for members of the Royal Family. I must have had a tear in my eye because my daughter turned around and said, you all right, Father? I said, yeah, I said, I think it's the wind, you know. The Duke felt strongly that Britannia should have remained in service. A yacht which offered him freedom and seclusion, it now stands as a timeless memorial to a man who played such a central role in its history. <laughs>